Yeah. Now, a special guest today, practically invented Saturday morning television, normally dressed like this. <laughs> you don't like you were. I never dressed like <laughs> that in my like life. Was. These days, you've heard his voice. He's in charge of the toughest quiz on TV. Who wants to be him? Oh, yeah. Mr. Chris Tarrant. Do you what like you? this? What's wrong no, with No, I don't. You look like my dentist. What are you doing? What kind of dentist are you going to? <laughs> Very strange man. <laughs> exactly. Right? You, don't, you don't normally wear this, do you? Well, not really, no. Well, I do him not this in the kitchen, but chef up here, yeah. Yeah. Like it? It's like talking to Noddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, anyway, you're here for Food Heaven and Yes, food, I right? am. You like yes. your food? I love my food. It doesn't show. I do. I love my grub. Right, there I you go. So, of course, at the next stage program, I'll cook Food Heaven or Food Hell for Chris. Something based on your favourite ingredient, Food Heaven, or your nightmare ingredient, Food Hell. So, so some of our guests and our chefs and some of our viewers decide what, sh uh, what you'll be eating at the end of the show. So, Food Heaven, what would it be? Meat. I'm a real Meat. proper carnivore. I like lamb or pork or beef. I love big chunks of... I can actually just live on meat alone without anything else. I Sounds love it. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, okay. So, food hell. There's got to be a flip side. Well, um, it's not good having these no, two. No, anything. I just don't do dessert. I hate dessert. Even school oh. days, I hated all the desserts they brought. All those oh, disgusting dear. things they brought. Right. And then. Um, and the other thing you just mentioned, the only other thing I really hate apart from desserts is rhubarb. <laughs> <laughs> so why am I here? Oh, it's going well. Talking to a man dressed as Noddy. I don't know. Well, this, anyway, so we'll have a nice time. Or a rich chocolate pudding for Chrissy's well, Food Heaven. Uh, uh, I've got something a little different. An Asian-style shredded lamb salad. First, I'm going to roast a whole shoulder of lamb, shred it into a salad with little gem, mazuna, carrots, bean sprouts and herbs, and it's dressed with a little lime juice, ginger, peanuts, chilli, and then finished off with a crispy shredded lamb balls to go on the top of... Chris could be facing food hell, which is that delicious, wonderful, fantastic, rich chocolate oh, pudding. You see, that's the stuff they used to the, give us at school. No, it's, it's a, not. It's just, the chocolate, I can't which see school chocolate you went to, but no. this one, the chocolate is melted with butter, eggs and sugar, then mixed together with flour and baked oh. in the oven, and the pudding is served warm with caramelised bananas, a simple creme anglaise, oh. or as we call it over this side of the table, custard, uh, <laughs> and a scoop of banana ice cream. Oh. Wait, you have to wait to then the show, see which one Chris gets. Are you happy with it? No. So, yes, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to <laughs> well, it. That's the whole idea of it, you know. Uh, so yeah. let's meet our other chef table guests as you join it over there, I think. What do you reckon to the wine to go with it? Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah? Yeah, lovely. Lovely white wine. Beautiful. Good match? I think so, too. Yeah, I think, I think it's still a bit of a bargain. So even at just over eight quid, I think, a bit of a bargain. Mm. What do you reckon, Chris? Happy with that? Well, I don't normally drink till about 20 past 10. Good Lord, is that the time? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Girls? Yeah, good. Something Very you'd nice. ever attempt? Oh. That pasticcio looked delicious. And, uh, and as I've said before, the great idea of serving a big dish like that for a dinner party is fantastic. I know I did shoulder of pork the other day and it sold really well out there. All of you went to the supermarket and tried to get yours. Uh, but this is a little dessert that you can do exactly the same way. You keep <laughs> saying that. <laughs> this where's is your, a little meal for your silly hat gone? Yeah, well, I've lost it. It's gone. It's Good gone. Boy. There you go. Right, uh, so what I'm going to do is this is a nice, simple dessert, but you need to use puff pastry. And I make my own. This is rough puff pastry. All right? And what we're going to do is we just... What is it? Rough puff pastry? Rough puff pastry. That's not easy to say, is it? Rough puff. The difference is, is how you add the butter. Um, you add the butter diced with rough puff. You'd be lost without butter, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would be lost without butter. You're a martyr to butter. I am, because I think it's good. It's all flavour, flavour. That's what it should be. But You're going to come back in another life as a pat of butter. <laughs> you will. I already am, mate. <laughs> From this down, I, I never said am. that. I already am. There you go. So we just basically... <laughs> A little bit of flour like that, and we roll it all out. Now, like I said, it's the way you add the butter. This has been diced, normal puff paste, you add it as a big lump, and then laminate the dough. But this one, like that. Yeah, yeah. And then what we do is take our tray and we bake this. So we bake it in between two trays. So I would leave that to rest in the fridge, pick it really well with a fork, put the tray on the top, bake it 400 degrees centigrade. Why does it have to be between two trays? Because you want to get it nice and flat, nice and thin. Right. Okay. Which is going to be used in a second. In the meantime, because I want the flavour of the puff pastry, but I don't. I want to get get it nice and thin. Add a little bit of uh, vanilla to here. Now, I was reading your a little bit of brief about you. I didn't realise that you were a teacher. Yes. Originally, I taught for um, twelve months in oh. the East End of London to fourteen-year-old. What um, did you teach? Not a lot, actually, right. because <laughs> they didn't seem to want to learn much. They were sort of fourteen. Gotcha. They wanted to leave very badly. But it was, uh, it was a learning curve. It was good fun. A big, steep learning curve for you, because he said you didn't enjoy it that much. No. No, and I left. I think if it had been a nice little twee school in sort of Dorset or somewhere with a, a river at the end of the, end of the school playground, I'd probably still be You'd there You'd have now. enjoyed it a little I bit I would more. have loved it, yeah, but it was, it was very... It was quite depressing. I mean, the kids didn't want to learn, and it was just a tough environment for them, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, I was reading a little bit about yourself as well, about the fact that you always wanted to be a sort of a TV presenter, and you wrote to 
well, hundreds of letters to try and get a job. I did, right? in longhand. None of, none of you sort of... I don't know, even typewriters in those days. Uh, and in it was, longhand? Yeah, no, really. Right. And, it, and it was things like... Um, I just remember this dreadful phrase. It was a very, very sort of me, me, me letter. It, it had a phrase in it saying, I am the face of the 70s. This is your last chance to snap me up. And I remember writing that even now, thinking, oh... And most of them had the good sense to write back going, Dear Sir Stroke, Madam, thank you so much for your letter. Um, unfortunately, we have no vacancy for you at the moment, but we will, of course, keep it on file. Yeah. Now, file basically means in the bin, nutter. Um, <laughs> and ATV, as it was then, before it was central, and yeah. Yorkshire Television. I think they invited me for an interview just to see right. what sort of person wrote letters like that in longhand. Yeah. Um, and they gave me a job. On and that the, was it? On a news programme, yeah. I was quite a serious investigative news journalist for about... About a week. But, I mean, most people know you from, from the radio scene. How do you get to do f from there to, obviously, the capital where you were? I remember you from because I used to listen to you when I was working yeah, as a chef every in London. Morning. I, I, I loved it. I had a great time. But, I mean, it was, it was something like 17 years, I think, of um, 5 m alarm calls. I loved it. I had a great time on radio. I'm doing radio again next week. But I, you are? I don't want to get, yeah, I'm doing radio too again yeah. next week. But I don't, want, I don't want to go back to sort of doing daily, daily, daily radio. I love it. I love radio. I'm glad to look in on radio. <laughs> but it's, I, I was because I watched my, my mate Mr. Evans, who you'll know, because oh, uh, yes. the last time we uh, we, we met, met was on a television studio. It was, it was, and, and you chose Chris Evans to be yeah. your partner. Well, I've watched on him a doing... celebrity who wants to be a millionaire, and I said to you at the time, I said, James, why have you picked Evans? You could pick somebody good. Last time he was on <laughs> with Wogan, he was an absolute disaster. He wasn't, wasn't good, he? was he? They went away with five hundred quid, and the only thing was, I said, well, at least you couldn't do worse than last time. But by golly, James, you proved us wrong. And we did do. worse a lot. <laughs> you went away with 250 quid. It was even worse. No, I, I don't know how to put, You probably don't know this. It's a kind of record. No celebrity or millionaire over 13 years has ever gone away with less than at least £1,000. You went away with 250 quid. Yeah, thanks for that, Chris. Yeah, well, lovely. I just anyway. thought I'd remind you. Yeah, yeah that's why you're getting what, a dessert, mate. There you go. Oh, no, it has to be. <laughs> it isn't decided yet. I, I think it probably is, actually. You pick the questions. That's yeah. All. But. Anyway, how do you go from doing that? How did he no, get No, let's there? come back to you on who No, no, let's move to change something. But your producer of the radio show, didn't they make... Oh, they invented... Briggsy, yeah, yeah. Yes. David Briggs was my producer on radio. He, he came up with... He came up with... Is that all right? He came up yeah, with a right. load of um, formats for the radio show over the years. And one of the ones was a thing called uh, Double or Quits. Yeah. Um, and it became the germ of what is now Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, um, which is the most successful game show in the history of the world. It goes out to something like 115 countries. <laughs> it's, it's won every sort of award. I mean, it's, it is an amazing format. It is pretty. You're probably pretty. not that fond of it, but, but it is actually... I mean, no, it's I've got good memories of it, though. No. It's such a simple format, you know, and, and, and it works everywhere. It works in China, it works in South America, it works everywhere. And how many millionaires? Do you know how many millionaires the... the Around down? the world, I don't know. Um, in the UK, there's been, there's been six. Well, no. five and a crook, basically. Um, so there's been five and, 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 a, and a coffer. Five and a coffer, yeah. yeah. Right, I'll just show you this. This is, your, this is your dessert. If you ever want to make this, Chris, yeah, this right. is your whipped cream, bit of vanilla. I've put some uh, creme anglaise or a bit of custard in the cream. So it's, it so turns... It's, like, it's low calorie, then. This is a real weight Absolutely, weight absolutely low calorie. Mm. And the strawberry you look like meat. Yeah. No, it yeah. doesn't. It looks like a strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> They're red. No, it doesn't. Trust me on this. OK, good. You seem to Why are you Thierry Henry? I was promised a top <laughs> Frenchman. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'll stop this. Zinedine <laughs> Zidane. Yes. Where is Zinedine Zidane? Yes. Anyway, I'll those lot of laughing, oh, yes. uh, chatting away. I've found another sieve. It's the one that Alan hasn't broken. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we're going to just basically just take this... What have you done now? Hot skewers. He's smoking himself. <laughs> because he's changed himself. He left his wife behind now. Yeah, so this is the hot little metal skewers you heat up. Like that. Why are you doing that? Sorry? Why are you doing that? It looks beautiful. Why? Yeah. What's it, what's it doing? I don't That's know it. what's it doing. It's just making it look pretty for you. <laughs> Not that you're going to eat it anyway, so I don't know why I'm bothering anyway. <laughs> well, no, I just wonder why you're taking a perfectly good looking dish and then burning it at the top. Because then. You... <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Well, right. No, anyway. no, but you know what I'm saying. So, anyway, you're doing radio next week? Oh, yes, Radio 2 in the afternoons, 2 yeah. till 5. I enjoy that. I get my sort of fixer radio out for a, yeah. a few months and I do a bit more. So, do you prefer radio than TV or what? what? I, I just like them both. I mean, they're fun. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I do like radio. I have to say, it is a bug. Uh, and Radio 2 is splendid. I mean, when I first did it for them about a year ago, you know, bear in mind I'm used to sort of a certain amount of playlisted stuff, whatever. I sent yeah. them in this list of sort of my old hippie tracks, thinking, well, they probably let me play about ten of them. And a very nice man came back and said, yeah, OK, Chris, they're fine. Got any more? And I went, 
but I sent you 200. Oh, we'll be done with those by Friday. I mean, it's brilliant. It's fantastic. I mean, I know the, I know the game, so I don't just play completely left of field, but um, I get me Floyd albums out and all that's good stuff. Chris, in I'll between your radio bits and pieces, your huge, huge other passion, massive passion, is, of course, fishing. I wonder what you're going to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, oh, I've fished. <laughs> now I've fished since I was four. My granddad taught me to... What are you doing now? Yeah. Everybody down! Look <laughs> out! <laughs> Nobody panic! Getting my own back on you. <laughs> right, watch, watch, watch. Easy now. Easy. Come on, I'm already nervous enough. I've got these pastry chefs over there. Look, there you go. Marvellous. It's coming off. Ooh. Nice, oh, lovely. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Get in there. Get, <laughs> get in there, my son. <laughs> Go on then, fishing. Oh, yes. Well, I started when I was four. I fished all over the world. I'm fishing in Russia again in about six weeks' time. What's this um, about a turbot? The biggest what is turbot? it about a turbot? The biggest turbot or something? Do you, you mean a halibut? Halibut. Well, no, he's flat, isn't it? He looks like turbot, it. Halibut. <laughs> it's flat. Are you sure you're in, in the right. <laughs> <laughs> Not particularly, no. <laughs> turbot, halibut is flat, Go in on, it. Then. Get in there, my son. Yeah. Um, I did... Good what Lord. are you doing now? Come on, everybody's listening. <laughs> no, they're not. Um, <laughs> somebody said to me, what's the biggest fish you've ever caught? Uh, yeah. And I caught a £200 halibut. Not turbot, halibut. Halibut. Uh, which was enormous. It was actually longer yeah. than the boat. It's fantastic. That's amazing, isn't it? I'm making my own candy floss, you see. They're going to put it on your head. There you go. Wear it as a little gold wig. You can do it. It's ex-presenter of this show, Anthony Wall Thompson. Look. <laughs> 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 there you go. Lovely. Oh, thank you, James. Not that you're going to eat it. Exactly. So like, <laughs> you? There you go. Thank you. There you go. We'll dive Thanks. into that. Right, what we're mm. cooking uh, for Chris at the end of the show. You could be having food to heaven. I hope so, because he's well, got nothing to eat. It's going to be lamb. I'm going to roast a whole shoulder of lamb and then good. shred it into a salad with little gem, mm. lettuce, mazuna, carrots and herbs. Yummy, yummy. A mix together with a dressing made of lime juice, chilli, a little bit of ginger, some Thai fish sauce and top it off with some peanuts, some crispy shredded lamb balls yes. to go with it. Yes. Right, a bit of texture. Oh, Chris could be facing that dreaded food hell, a rich chocolate pudding. Oh, no, I don't want that. No, I <laughs> the really don't want The chocolate is melted with butter, sugar oh. and eggs and then mixed together with flour, Great. baked in the oven and the puddings are served warm with caramelised bananas. Oh. Oh. A little creme anglaise, that's custard to you oh. and I, and a scoop of banana ice cream. Oh. Some of our viewers and the guys in the studio get say Chris's fate today. Mm. Alain, what are you going to go for? Chocolate or are you going to go for lamb? Chocolate. Oh, I'm, I'm a pudding. Oh, I'm a pudding. Yeah. Louise? You're my friend. I, I like you. I've got to go yes. lamb. Yes. You've got to go lamb? Oh, yeah, I've got to go. No. Good girl. No. Come on, you've got time to Come change on, your mind. <laughs> but you have to wait to the end of the season. Dawn of the Come on, ladies, that argue. Right, let's catch up with the latest action from Celebrity Mouse Chef semi final.